that a poverty mindset leaves a person feeling guilty and judgmental of other people. A materialistic mindset leaves people feeling greedy and stressed about money. But a biblical mindset leaves us feeling generous and thankful for God's provision in our life. That's the place that God wants us to be. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Modern Church Leader. Excited for this week. We're actually going to talk a bunch about finances um, and also just reconnect with, uh, I guess, a longtime friend of Tithely. So <laughs> um, excited to, to chat today. Um, Pastor John Pierce, man, thanks for joining the show. Hey, it's great to be with you, Frank. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're coming to us all the way from Australia. The beautiful Sunshine so Coast, yes. You're you're a day ahead, so you know the future. We can tell you exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. Stay tuned, man. This is going to be awesome. It's going to be a good show. Lots of investing advice coming your <laughs> way. Um, well, John, you—I mean, you've been around for a long time serving the church. I'd love to just kind of hear a little bit about your journey. Like, how'd you get to where you are today? And sure. So involved in serving sure, the church. Sure. Thank you. Well, uh, look, I, I've been in business for thirty years. I, I did that kind of background of marketing, accounting, get a degree in that. I've run small business for 30 years, but always loved church, always had a sense of wanting to serve the Lord. And my wife and I had the privilege of taking the church that we were part of on in the year 2000, so 22 years ago, which makes me sound older than I feel. Wow. And uh, and so pretty much... No, that's not that long no, ago, not, you know. you got a lot of experience, yeah. but it's only... Yeah, 20 22 years. years. And so, I, you know, one of the things that I've uh, done in that time, Frank, is I've kept the small business, the entrepreneurial side of my world going, which has been great. It's allowed me to... More of a hobby, to be honest. It's allowed me to to uh, be generous. It's allowed me to take my family on some nice holidays. And it's allowed me to talk the language of a lot of business people in our church. And, uh, and then o- over the, the time of the the church and pastoring and we planted some churches and and we kind of have the privilege of helping out with C3, which is led by Phil Pringle globally, over about 550 churches around the globe. So uh, we're on that exec team and help out with that as well. Yeah, very cool. Um, what Give us a sense of like, you know, you've been at it for 22 years. What's the, you're still doing it today. Yep. You're pastoring yep. a church actively. And uh, I mean, what's it like to pastor a church, still do some kind of, business stuff on the side and obviously we're going to get into the book you just sure. wrote we'll talk a bunch about that today um but man it's sounds busy sounds like it, a lot it's of stuff. full it's full i've got th- i've got three <laughs> three great kids who are all, all you know 19 through to 24 uh and so it, it is okay. full but i i genuinely love it i honestly i love seeing lives particularly people who don't have a faith background come to faith and begin to walk with god it's it lights my fire and so to see the transformation in people to see, you know, we've seen some really cool miraculous things happen in people's lives uh, everywhere from turnarounds from drug addictions like many pastors through to through to healings through to, you know, but really what lights my fire is that transformation journey and going the long haul with people. So I love, I, I just, I do love being a pastor. It's a great yeah. challenge and yeah. it's a, it's, it's a privilege. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. What, what kind of, business stuff have you been into over the years or, or what is your your other as you, the hobby yeah 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 uh, <laughs> With, so, maybe not really a hobby but you yeah, know you call it yeah, a hobby yeah. so well, we'll it's an it. interest i spend uh, these days i spend about three or four hours a week uh on on my business i've got a management team and crew there but i'm in manufacturing and so we, okay. we manufacture stuff for the construction industry around australia overseas we do a bit of exporting and i i, I do very much keep them separate the, the church and my business world uh i think i don't like to create the conflict of interest so i don't think anyone in my church or well, there wouldn't there'd be a handful of people in my church who would know what my business is because i try not to yeah, have that conflict but uh, yeah so that's that's the business and, and it's good for me because I, I i hated chemistry at school to, uh, to have a chemical business uh it doesn't make me want to go physically to my business it might be different if i had a, a football business or a, a you know a golfing <laughs> shop or something like that i might want to go there all the time but the fact that it's chemicals oh we got a golfer uh, we got a go- I a see the golf ball in the a, background a hacker, too so a hacker we call them ourselves yeah. <laughs> well i picked up golf last year okay and uh you know i guess covid golf guy and like i'm obsessed there we go Absolutely you're away obsessed. that's awesome yeah 
yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's a ton of fun, and I've got to golf some great places already. So beautiful, you know. Give me a, give me a few years, and hopefully, I'll be halfway. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, cool. So, I mean, okay, you you doing all that, and you also wrote a book. Yeah. Um, and I wrote it down: the wheels of financial freedom. What what motivated you to write a yeah, book? Yeah, yeah. Is it your first book? Have you it written is my some first other books book. before? It's, yeah, the wheels of financial okay. blessing. It's called. It's uh. Yeah, yeah, it's basically, you know, I, I I didn't really ever want to be an author, but I just got prodded so much both by the Lord and a lot of people. I've been kind of teaching this concept of the book for about 15, 20 years and seen a lot of people's uh, financial worlds transform. And we know that if you can help people's financial worlds transform, that there's a massive flow into marriage, family, uh, into into generosity, into the kingdom of God being advanced. So as a pastor, I take it as a pretty a, a significant responsibility to look after financial discipleship as a, as a key theme, not the, the only theme. I don't think anyone wants to hear us pastors bang on about money week in, week out. But, you know, I, I think just as we need to talk about marriage, relationships, we need to talk about finances and provide biblical financial discipleship. So that that's the background of of why I wrote it and uh, we've, we've yeah. kicked it out there now. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, I need to go read it cause I love stuff like mm-hmm. this. And I, I mean, I, I think I'm a, I'm a product of, you know, I've been a Christian for just about just over 20 years. Yep. Um, yep. And, but early on, you know, I was taught by some great guys that, you know, giving is a big deal. Yep. And, yep. and, and that's, this is back in college, you know, so I didn't have any money, but just yes. being taught the kind of biblical principles of being generous and giving yes. and all those things. But it was like early when I was a bit younger and then that has stuck with me. And then over the years, you know, you get into a place in, in life when you're making more money yep. and it flows into our marriage and kind of all the things you're, you're talking about, like it, it is a big deal to kind of be, uh, I don't know, just spiritually having a good good sense of money and being being generous. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I think if you don't, you know, if we don't have yeah. good financial discipleship, and it's you know, I'll chat in a moment about the holistic approach. But if we don't, people yeah. end up, you know, stressed about money. Christians can be so stressed about money because they've heard one aspect of finances, uh, or or they're chasing money as if it's the main thing of their life, and they end up selling out on the, selling their soul, selling out on their values, selling out on family. So to kind of get a really balanced perspective, uh, I I grew up Frank in in a Christian environment, uh, in a traditional Christian environment, uh, and part of what happened for me is I developed what I would call a poverty mindset. It was really around the the upbringing that I that I had, not, and it was never specifically spoken. But you know the the idea that if you're a real Christian, you'll take a if you're the ultimate Christian, you'll take a vow of celibacy and a vow of poverty, and that would prove that you're yeah. really spiritual. And Matt, right. the vow of celibacy, I'm definitely out on. But the poverty the poverty one, I kind of I, I thought maybe maybe this it's is so it's soaked in a little yeah, bit yeah maybe yeah. this is, could please god and and again not overtly spelt out but just mistruths just miss biblical things like the love of money or or just money is the root of all evil not the love of money or the idea that just because one guy was told to sell his possessions and give to the poor that all of us should sell our possessions and give to the poor and so over a period of time that became my default mindset that really to please god you had to go it out and that you know so that meant i'd become guilty if i ever had financial stuff i'd be judgmental of other people the christians who are prospering so so that the beginning of my journey was really to to go after mindset and and i've kind of that's that's a big part of what i write about yeah what what got you out of that i i grew up with an amazing mom you know divorced parents mm-hmm lived with mom, saw dad, but you know, mom really raised me, you know, single income, didn't make a lot of money, somehow magically got my sister and I through college and best mom on the planet, but definitely not like with money, right? Like barely kind of getting by and that kind of stuff influences you. And so it stuck with me. I'm with you in that it didn't, I don't, there was never like a teaching on like poverty or anything like that, but I do think like the way you're raised has a big impact. Yes. 
on how you view money and, and all. And then you got to break out of that stuff. Totally, at some totally. Point. And unfortunately, right. the ch- so what got you out of yeah, that? Yeah, well, unfortunately, like, the church is, is one of the, the, the big institutions that really has put that guilt on people for having possessions. So uh, what got me out of that, I began to attend a, a Pentecostal church that now I'm part of, C3, and our, our pastor, our, the leader of the movement, Phil Pringle, would be he be, began to teach on biblical mindsets around money, and it shocked me. I was like, "No, no, what are you doing? How, how can how can you want people to to do well?" So what what got me out of is initially I heard that that teaching that confronted me and offended me, to be honest. And then, and not that everyone, not that every Christian should be wealthy and rich, and it's God's, you know, that's the sign of your spirituality. But just that, no. You have a heavenly Father who wants to bless you in your financial needs, not just in your spiritual needs, but your financial needs. And so, I I actually went and did a Bible study. I I opened up my Bible and got an exercise book, and I went through the Bible and said, "I'm going to write down at the front of that exercise book every scripture that says God wants to prosper or bless me or look after my financial needs." The back of the book, I'm going to write every scripture that says that God wants me to be poor, that that would please him. And in the middle, I'll write scriptures that are that are sort of ambivalent around that. You know, I couldn't find one scripture that said God wanted me to be poor. I found a stack that said poverty is a curse, that God wants me to help the poor, uh, but never that he wants me to be one of the poor. Um, and so I read heaps of scriptures, just things like, you know, he delights in the prosperity of his servant. God, he wants to you to prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. That, you know, that if you seek first his kingdom, he'll add the, these needs to you. And, and the, so I found a stack of scriptures like that, that the Bible way was blessing comes to those who follow God and have their heart in the right place. Uh, but then I also found a stack of scriptures that I put in the middle that talked around not letting money become your master, uh, being content in all your circumstances. So th- those kind of things. So really what what I guess shocked me out of it was some teaching. What really helped that embed in me was, was some b- personal Bible study, which I've included in this book. But then what it took such a I, – I think it's like a screw that goes into your brain, poverty – you can't it's not like a nail you pull out in one moment it's something that you have to unscrew over a period of time so for me that meant buying some new clothes when i could have gone to the second hand shop and i felt guilty about it uh for me that meant on my honeymoon staying in a nice hotel where we could have stayed in a more economical hotel and and struggling with so it kind of one of the markers of, of a poverty mindset is when you feel guilty about enjoying something that you can afford, not something you can't afford, but something you can afford. So, so I've had a progressive over 20, 20 years, 25 years of having to you know, enjoy some nice things and feel like God's smiling about it and having to tell myself for years. And that's the, that's the renewing of a mind. Yeah, yeah. It's so fat, like wrestling through that whole thing right and you're like well how would jesus do it and how did jesus live and should i be living like that and what does that mean it's just a crazy thing and i can see how people can kind of fall on not there's not like two sides like i like fall in all different sure places on the spectrum of this yes it's it's interesting Um, i remember hearing as a kid would jesus drive a bmw and right and yeah that kind of that kind of teaching and i think we look through when we read the scriptures. We don't look at it in context. If you are an Israelite or a Jew, it was it was understood that the blessing of God included financial blessing. It was it. So the the you know the the Bible is written like in the form of flocks and yeah flocks land and herds and, and sheep and, and, and you know and Job crops Job and, was the wealthiest yeah. man in the East. He was the Bill Gates of yeah. his generation, if you like. You, yeah, you yeah. go right through them, and so Jesus wore a, a coat that was so expensive that they wouldn't rip it into pieces. They had to actually cast lots for it. Jesus had a treasurer to look after his finances. Paul was kept in prison because the the, the governor was waiting for a bribe. He knew he was a man of means. So when we, we often think, oh, the Bible figures were these poor figures sitting back struggling to make ends meet. And it's it's not true. They it's not the way that, that they operated in their day. And somewhere along the line, uh, this mindset's got in 
Paul, I think Paul calls it the doctrine of demons in Timothy, where he talks about there's this mindset that says if you go without, somehow that's spiritual. So if you go without, if you're a person who never has sex and never gets married, that's pleasing to God. And Paul calls that the doctrine of demons. He says there's this thing on the, if he can't make you really bad, he'll make you feel guilty for enjoying the things that God's provided for you to enjoy. So, I mean, I could go through scripture after scripture on it, Frank, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of convinced about this. And that, that's one side of, of a of mindset, I guess, the poverty mindset. The flip side of that is a materialistic mindset. And I, I think Jesus went just as hard after that as as poverty. And that's where money's the answer to all my needs. I'm stressing about having enough. My identity is in my possessions. You know, this there's this, and that's where Jesus said, you can't serve money and God. So, so th- yeah, I, I, I'll explain again. I'm, I'm like so- living in between the two. Yeah, is the, biblical some, right? paradigm, like the biblical paradigm. I say, this is how I say it. I say that, that a poverty mindset leaves a person uh, feeling guilty and judgmental of other people. A, a materialistic mindset leaves people feeling greedy and stressed about money. But a biblical mindset leaves us feeling generous and thankful for God's provision in our life. That's the that's the place that God wants us to be, and that's that that's yeah. So that's a mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, so it's called what the the wheels. Yeah, the wheels of, of financial, financial blessing. blessing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 picturing a car yes, here. It's great. Or, or a truck yep, or yep, a wagon. Yep. The four, four wheels. wheels. Are four there wheels. four? Okay. What? Tell us what are the four? All right. Let, let me. And so here. let me explain. We've just spent quite the 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 start here all on the first wheel, which is which is a biblical mindset. So this is this par- paradigm or metaphor for me. I've pastored too many people who who would just have financial stress and and would think um, I mean I feel like that's like a lot of people yeah. just in general yeah, totally, in the world totally. right yeah. and if you want to go with America like Canada yeah. Australia yeah. like really developed places like people just are worried about yeah, money Yeah stressed in fact you can go to a, th- a developing country where people have nothing and they're less stressed and that's that's about right. their mindset so so you know and I would find all kinds of extremes around money. So one was mindsets that we've talked about, but others would be people thinking, I'm in financial problems and they've heard messages about giving because at church, that's what we we often don't talk about financial stewardship or discipleship. We often talk about just the tithe or just your generosity. So so many people I've seen in a whole and, and they're just giving more money, believing that if I just sow some more seed, I'm going to have a breakthrough. And I'm I'm a massive believer in sowing of seed, but I this is where I saw this in play. I I, I kind of got this metaphor. Well, it's like a car. If your car has one awesome pumped up tire and three flat tires, it's not going to go anywhere. So, and lots of people have got three flat tires off their financial car, and they're going, man, I just need to pump up that giving one a whole lot more because that's going to solve my problem. But that's that's. That's a wrong thinking. So it's a balanced, that's why I call it a balanced approach. So I'll give you the four wheels real quickly. The first, the first wheel is the biblical mindset. If you don't have a right mindset, you're just gonna you'll you'll keep coming back to whatever your core belief about money is. You won't you won't experience blessing if you think that God doesn't want you to be blessed, or you'll be chasing after money instead of God, and that'll be wrong. So you've got to get a right biblical mindset. The second wheel is the is wise stewardship. And this, this is, you know, there's a, lot to, there's a lot to learn for people about being a wise steward. And I outline seven principles of that. The first for me is the tithe, uh, the, the principle that I'm a steward of all of the resources God puts at my disposal. And so me returning the first tenth to him, is not a, it's not about generosity. That's actually about me acknowledging that I'm a steward of God's resources. So I never say I'm giving my tithe to God. I'm returning the tithe because that's his. So that's a, and I talk, I know there's people have different perspectives around the tithe, but, but I kind of outline from, from what I think is a biblical point of view, why it's before the law, why it's encapsulated in the new Testament and why it's a great principle to live by. And so why stewardship? I know some people believe that if I give and sit at home in my pajamas, then the check's going to come in the mail and God's going to bless me. And so, why is stewardship? I'm not. 
yeah that that's an odd thing to believe i think yeah. but we'll just let it yeah be. yeah well i've heard people because they've heard the miracle stories and then yeah. and then christians can be suckers for investment scams because they just oh i've heard that god wants to prosper me so maybe this is it so you know, good, mm. wise stewardship is things like having a good work ethic. It's things like using credit wisely. It's things like having an investment mindset and, and you know, what, how the, what the Bible says about an investment mindset. So there's a range of integrity, uh, excellence. These are all things about being a wise steward. Uh, so that, that's the second wheel. Uh, the third one is generosity. That's the, that is the principle that God will return the seed you sow back into your world. And, and the fourth one, uh, the way I came on the fourth one, well, the fourth one is a spirit of faith. I find that most kingdom principles, supernatural principles, require someone to engage their faith and to pray into those areas. So Jesus actually teaches us to pray about our finances, give us today our daily bread, tells me that we should be praying over our finances on a daily basis to access uh, the way God wants to bless us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... That makes sense. Right. The four wheel totally, totally makes sense um, to me. What, like, in all of this, and we've kind of talked about some of it, but I mean, what do you think the biggest challenge with money is for people? Is it mindset? Is it is, or is it just? It could be one of these four. I think you like, know that's my ex struggle. my experience is it's one of the four, uh, and often that's what I would do if I was to. You know, if I was to have this conversation one on one or preach a message about this, at the end of it, I'd say, What I want you to do now is just think which of these four do you need to go to work on now rather than like, trying to. What is it for you today? Yeah, just, just right, you know. So over the next six, eight weeks, uh, if you don't, you know, and you're like, Well, I've never done a budget. All right. Well, that's a wise stewardship thing. Start to, start to, you know, uh, go to some uh, training around budgeting, get, get r really good at it, hang around some people who are good at managing their money and go to work on that. I remember a couple sat with me once and they just said, you know, said, oh, look, this financial thing's not working. God's not blessing us. We're generous. We tithe. We work hard. And so I went through and I said, oh, okay, well, just tell me how much, how much time a day do you spend praying about your finances? If you're sowing seed and being generous and the Bible says that God will he'll multiply the seed you've sown back to you. So that's a promise in the scripture. Are you activating your faith around this? And they said, no, not at all. I said, well, that's, that, that's just a key part. You, you have to, you're sowing seed, but you've got to water it with your faith. You've got to get really, that Jesus responded not to need, but to faith. So you need to activate your faith. So, yeah. so I'd think for anybody, it might be, could be all four. Someone could be great at all of them, but, definitely even with danielle and my in our our life if we're in a season and it's, things are tight we'll go okay what's what's happening here what's what's the area we need to just pump that tire up a bit more right right yeah no i love it when you started preaching on like now you've got the four wheels yep. like and you've done this 15 years or so you yep. said like how did it evolve for you over the 15 years or how did you crystallize it into the book? Yeah, you know? re really. Yeah, great question. I think I, I think probably the first five years of me pastoring and a bit before that was me actually really a studying the word to, to, yeah. to just make sure I'm looking at a holistic approach to, to the Bible, but two, a, a lot of personal experience. So, you know, I ran a business uh, and, and as I said, have done. And there was moments in that business. We had one moment where the bank wanted to foreclose on an overdraft we had with the business. Uh, the security, wait for it, the security on the overdraft was my parents' house. They'd gone into bat for this business loan. And and I I knew we were doing everything the right way in terms of, you know, biblical principles, et cetera, et cetera. The business wasn't ma losing a lot of money. The bank just changed the rules on me and wanted to to, to close it. And I got a promise from God um, that he was going to, instead of shame and humiliation, he'd give us a double portion as Isaiah 61. So I learned I would go to my business every morning and begin to speak the promises of God for half an hour and just get there before anyone else got there and just, just activate my faith, declare the promises of God. And I saw 
that supernaturally turn around. I, I probably there's probably twelve or fifteen stories like that that I put through the book. Some are business stories, but others others are just income. Where God, when we were wage earners, God increased our our income miraculously through no nothing except us, Danielle and I, praying for ten minutes a day over our finances and calling in the seed to multiply back to us. So I guess I probably had a period of five or seven years of studying the Bible and then experiencing what I what I was reading in the Bible personally. And so out of that, that's when I, I probably just came out of prayer one day, I think, Frank, just this metaphor of a car, realizing that yeah. people needed a holistic approach rather than the silver bullet that's going to fix their problems. And right. and then I began right. to teach I mean, it I, from there. Yeah. And, and I appreciate it in that it's like, it's uh it's thoughtful and it's not overly it's spiritual but it's not like i don't know like you have to do things and be faithful yes. and, like together yeah. right you have to sort of learn common sense things yes. maybe they're not all common sense but sure. you know like you mentioned budgeting yeah. right you have to do certain things and be a good steward and have the right mindset and be faithful yep. Yeah, and invest in you, and save right? and 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 be good with those areas of your life, which, which yeah. is probably harder work. It'd, it'd be easier just to say, "Cool, give today, pray tomorrow, get blessed the next day." Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not easy. It takes it takes work, and God will show up. Yeah. You know, as with most things, yeah. like God will show up in that, especially when you're being faithful, like you're bringing Him into it yes. versus just doing it on your own. I think that's because when you bring him into it and you're praying, like you'll see God do things Yeah. versus maybe not where he is doing things, but you don't notice it. You don't see it because you're not being spiritual. So true. Kind of so it. true. Well, I love, you know, as I've preached and taught this over the years, I've seen the lights go on for people and it's just, you know, I've got a, a couple in our church who, who came into our church and they were, they had the, they had more of a materialistic mindset, I would say, and they wanted to be prosperous. They wanted to be blessed, but they're going about it all the wrong way. They were in debt, sixty thousand dollars of personal debt, and uh, you know, prospering on credit, which is not prospering at all. Yeah. So, but <laughs> trying to live the lifestyle, you know, and yeah. and so they they kind of heard this teaching and these principles outlined, and they would come along and pray, and I taught them how to pray around finances, and now. You know, now they're giving ridiculous amounts of money. They're in their own home. They're, they're running a business that's blessed. And I've seen story after story of that kind of thing in people's lives where, A, people, their heart, their, their kind of mindset of God has changed. And then the way they do their finances has changed. Their family's blessed. But then they're, they're, the kingdom is being advanced because their their church is, because they're, you know, given ridiculous amounts of money. And I think that's the, that's why you've got to take a long-term approach of this, both as a pastor. You know, we have to disciple people long-term. Even that might mean that the needs of our church financially, we can't go the desperate approach. It's just, no, let's build people over a long period of time and and the giving capacity of the church will grow as people are built into that. How do you get, I have two questions and we'll we'll wrap it and sure. figure out where people can go to get the book. How how do you get people to actually listen and like pay attention and you know what I mean? Like want to actually take action on this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that, that's the question for all pastors on all stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not just on, a, on everything in life. Yeah, it boils yeah. down to that. Question. How do we get people to actually want to follow the way, the way of Jesus and the way of the, the Bible? Yeah. Uh, I, look, I think I often, feel like this when we're setting culture when we're when we're teaching people around any area that we want to definitely make sure we're preaching biblical truth and so it's earth in the word and keep pointing people back to the word we want to model what we're teaching so you know i never want to get up in front of my church and 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 say hey you should you should have a perfect financial life uh, you know because that's that's impossible but i want to be real about about what God's doing in my life. And then I think, I really think testimonies are an important part of, of building a culture in any church where what we want more of people are sharing their story. So I think that would be a really important part, whether it's someone who begins to tithe and sees a breakthrough 
whether it's someone who's stretched and sacrificed or just began to got on, th- got on top of their budget and bought their first house. I love to get people up to share that story. And often they'll say, oh, we did the, we did the money management course, the, the Dave Ramsey money management course. You know, We did this, this program that the church has, um, has provided for us and it's given us some, some great content. So I think testimonies, preaching, modeling, you know, there's, often there's just one-on-one coaching at a small group level that are really important. Right. Right, right. Yeah, I love all that. How have you seen you you've mentioned it, but just this concept of like, when when people are being good stewards of their money, and, you know, just kind of doing a lot of the things that you've been talking about, like it leads to increased generosity. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I don't even have a specific question. But talk a little bit about that. You know, like, when you're when you're doing well financially and managing your money well, like you can be more generous, yeah, and yep. that's a big deal. I think I think there's no doubt about it. To advance the kingdom, to build churches, to to you know do missions, to evangelize the world, it takes money. Uh, it takes, it takes money, it, yeah. it's resources are a big component of what we need to do, whether it's buildings or whether it's staff or whether it's church plants or whatever it might be, and therefore. You know, I think that not everybody has the gift of giving, but I, I believe just as we want to teach everybody to grow their prayer life, to grow as a servant, to grow in their worship to God, to grow in their, we we need to teach people to grow in their generosity. Paul writes about, I want you to excel in this grace as well when he writes to the Corinthian church. So we want to help people excel in the grace of giving, and and as they as they do that. Yes, there'll be roller coaster rides and different seasons of life and curveballs. And, you know, when you start financing the church, really financing the church as a as a passion, you're going to come under spiritual attack because that's that's a zone that the devil hates. So so I think teaching people a holistic realm about that. I do I do one chapter, the final chapter, it's like a bonus chapter, Frank, in the book. It's called Anointed for Business. Because of my own experience in business and because I've helped a lot of business people, I believe a lot of business people have the gift of giving and a lot of business people sometimes feel like second-class Christian citizens. Uh, If I was really, if I'm really a good Christian, I'll be in the ministry. But I believe that business is a, a significant calling for people. And so I talk a bit about how to steward that call of of being an entrepreneur, being in business, and how to steward the gift of giving, because uh, it's a really important gift for people to utilize. And do you, are, are you sharing about it from the pastoral perspective or from the business person perspective? For, for a person in business, so it's basically. So okay. no, I'm not writing to pastors saying, "Hey, uh, this is how to treat people who are businesses in your church." It's right, really, right. it's really, it's a resource written to for Christians essentially, and particularly yeah. business people. That, that's a an extra yeah. part. I've got people around the world who are buying 50 and giving it to their business people and saying, read this. It's going yeah, to really yeah. help. No, you. it's important because I mean, if in, in some ways, right, if God has given you an ability to own and run a business yep. or somehow be um, at that kind of level, like oftentimes your ability to, to give and to support, you know, church planning and yep. church growth and yep. building and all that is, is more than most. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so having that mindset, to go, uh, you know, support the church that way. Yep. Is, I don't know. Maybe sometimes they're just not asked. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's a holy call, it's a holy about. calling. And yeah, I do think yeah. that pastors, all of us, can probably grow in the skills of connecting with people who are in business. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. important. No, I love it, man. It's super fun to talk about. We could talk for for plenty of time, but I want to be respectful. I know you got to probably have a big day ahead of you. Thank you, man. Um, where, where should folks go to get the book? Okay, so we're on Amazon. It's called The Wheels of Financial Love. Blessing. So you can download either an ebook or it's you know print on demand. So they'll be printed in the States, Canada, wherever you order it, they'll print it and it'll be out to you within a week. So you can jump on and just search The Wheels of Financial Blessing, John Pierce. Love that, man. Pastor John, this has been great. Thank you for joining the show today. Uh, total pleasure, Frank. Appreciate you. Appreciate all that uh, Tithely does. It's a big help to to many of our churches and our own church as well. It's a great resource. So well done, man. Yeah. Hey, we're working on some cool stuff for our Australian customers too. So coming, coming soon. Can't wait to hear about um, it. Yeah. Love it. Well, guys, thanks for listening today. We'll catch you next week on another episode of Modern Church Leader. See ya. 